This is Lucia Mitro. Please imagine a little girl born into a very busy family as a second child. Her brother is, in her parents' eyes, the god. So she has a big shoes to fill. The parents are busy. The little girl is left alone most of the time, yet she's surrounded by loving and caring people. Parents often question who is she reacting to. When she starts talking, she starts telling about the people she sees, just to learn that she's the only one who sees these people. She is told she's making that up, and even that she might be sick. No one believes her, so she believes them. She must be sick. There must be something very, very wrong with her. Even though she feels protected, she also feels scared. Very scared. She goes through a lot of unexplained experiences, but she keeps that all to herself. She's shy. She has no self-confidence. And all she wants is to be normal. Being raised under communist regime, by communist parents, there is no one she can ask questions. There is no one can tell her what's going on. One day she's attacked and she has nightmares. So her mother and grandma finally ask local what you can call shaman, for help. The shaman performs a ceremony, and this little girl nightmares stops. This little girl is mesmerized by the ceremony and want to know more. This is the first time she feels something familiar. This feeling is supported by a shaman's comment to her telling her how special and powerful she is. Special? Powerful? She never heard that before. However, after her mother and grandmother realized that she is drawn to that shaman, they forbid her to see her ever again. They tell her that that shaman works with dark powers and she's not ever to talk to her. They again infuse the fear and pain into the little girl. One day she visits neighboring town with her parents where a man approaches her and tells her that she is a very special and has to be very careful because some people could misuse her powers. She again feels the fear, especially when parents seems not to react to a stranger speaking to her. They would never recall this experience. The little girl becomes more scared and closes herself up to the whole world. She does her best to be as normal as she can. She finds escape in forest, with animals and trees. She feels protected and loved there. The experiences with invisible visitors, thoughts she knows are not hers, Knowledge she cannot explain where it comes from. The heaviness of her body. The feeling of the strange knowledge of every thought she feels before the person talks to her, causing her to have an extremely difficult life. She's about five years old at that time. One day, her grandma convinced her to go to church with her. Now, under communist regime, she was not allowed to go to, to church, but her mother let her. 
This little girl, girl always feels drawn to the beautiful building. When she enters the church, there are just a few old ladies. After a while, listening to their songs and prayers, she hears something that will change her life forever. She hears them sing, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only say the word, and my servant will be healed. Little girl's eyes wide open. What are they saying? Are they saying that he can heal and not be present? Is Jesus telling me it can be done? Immediately she started asking her grandma, What do they mean? How Jesus can heal a man without seeing him? Her grandma just gets annoyed by questions and tells her only Jesus can do it and be quiet. She gets the same reaction from everyone. However, in her heart she knows we all can do it. But how? So she turns into her invisible friends. They tell her she can do it too. She's doing that now. No need to ask questions. So she stopped asking questions and just believe. One day when she's about seven years old, she overhears her grandma referring to a local priest as spiritual father. She suddenly realized if that man in church is a spiritual father, he might be the one to explain things to her, right? It takes her over a year to build up a confidence to finally ask a question to that man. She uses an excuse to stop by a church and ask if he has any recycling glass for her school program. He would look at her knowing she's not attending the church, but shake his head and start walking towards a big garage on the property that was before used to store hay for animals. Big garage. She gathers all of her strength and asks the priest, Father, when one dies, what happens? He's a bit surprised by the question, but answers. We turn into dust. But do we all turn into dust? Or part of us still continues? She asked, knowing very well that soul never ceased to exist. The priests say, no, we are all gone. Nothing is left. But, but what if somebody sees the soul of the dead people? She finally asks. At that moment, the priest looks at her with eyes full of anger, resentment, contempt, and say, that person is possessed by evil and needs to pray for the rest of her life for God's forgiveness. The little girl feels like she is just hit by a ton of stones and suddenly has a memory flashback. She sees herself as an adult being crucified and put on fire. She sees the priest standing around and applauding to it, watching her to burn. She is suddenly brought back to the present time by noise of gate opening. The priest opens the gate and reveals that big crush filled with empty wine, but mostly alcohol bottles. The little girl feels devastating. She had so much faith in the only person she thought can give her an answer and help her with experiences. She looks at the priest with tears in her eyes, yet all she sees is an old man with good heart, 
but disappointed, discouraged by life. She tells him, this is too much for me to carry, quickly pointing to the glass bottles. I will ask teacher to send a truck directly here. She suddenly feels him being embarrassed. He realized that she recognizes the alcohol bottles. Here is the seven-year-old child standing in front of him, looking with sadness in her eyes. Still in horrible pain, she suddenly feels sorry for that man. He was not a spiritual father anymore. He was not a priest. He's just an old man beaten by life. Still in horrible pain, she sadly feels sorry for that man. He's not a spiritual father. He is not a priest. He's just an old man beaten by life. Now, remember, this is happening during deep, deep communism. Even though she never lost her faith in God, that day, she lost all of her faith in religion. Right then she realized she does not need a man to talk to God. She can talk to God directly. And since then, she started referring to God as a father. She would meet this priest on the street often after that day. They had a kind of special bond. It was always kind of mutual agreement between them. I will keep your secret if you keep mine. But that day she also loses her faith and trust in any mankind and never discloses her knowing and experience to anyone else. Knowing and experiences to anyone else. She feels inferior not worthy. Her self-confidence is below zero. She finds again the refuge in nature and animals. She would feel an object and could communicate just with everything and anything. She becomes a person that people would come to just went and would tell her the stories they would never tell anyone else. She calms them down. They feel secure and safe around her. She would stand up for anyone in pain and would budge from distance filled with love and pride. Anyone during their happy times. <sighs> My dear friends, I guess by now you figure it out that this little girl is me. This is my story. It wasn't until I came to USA and found a book of Louise Hay, Heal Your Life, that I realized I am not alone. I am not mentally sick, as they tried to convince me. And there are more people like me. Then during one of my strange experiences, I was urged to watch the show Crossing Over with John Edward. Even though I questioned his work from the beginning, uh, he convinced me that he is for real. I realized that it is okay to give messages. I learned so much from work of John Edward. Even we barely met and he has no idea who I am. He's been my greatest teacher. I realized that that curse I carried all of my life is actually a gift. Today, I am very passionate about helping people to connect with their loved ones. Now I know who I am. I know that only unconditional love would come through me. The light in eyes of my clients, the happy tears and smiles, the children's laughter is priceless. I work with people in ages 1 to 101 to help them with their similar gifts. Sometimes all they need is to someone believe in them. 
seeing a child come to me with head bound, hunched, trying to make herself or himself invisible, leaving me with eyes wide open, running out excited to experience the world, fearless, with the wide smile on their face. There is no better feeling than this. I would never want anyone to suffer the way I did. There is no need. I want to be the person I needed when I was a child. We all have the ability to communicate with each other and just with anything we like. During a session, I will assist you to cross the dimensions and connect with your loved one here on the other side. Angels, guides, your pets or any objects, but only with the messages you need to hear. Please know I am on need-to-know basis, meaning they only let me know what you really need to hear or need to reconfirm. I was blessed with many gifts. But I believe my greatest is to the ability to identify and bring up the gifts in you. Because of that, I am uniquely suited to teach people to open and develop those very gifts in themselves. With love, your Lucia.